guys, this is Mike from Michael Anthony Photography and thank you for checking out my article in This Month Shutter Magazine. Guys, this month I'm talking all about using studio lighting to create Vanity Fair style bridal portraits uh, for your wedding clients. Um, you guys might know that our studio has been doing bridal sessions for the last couple of years, post-wedding sessions, some people call them creative session, other people call them. Basically, it's just another way to get creative images for your clients because let's be honest, on the wedding day, things can be a bit chaotic. Of course, our goal is to create beautiful and incredible photos for our couple, but, uh, but sometimes you're limited as to what you can do by the venue or the time of day or the timeline or one of the million other reasons uh, why you can't um, get outside the box and create something different for your clients, right? So we started incorporating bridal sessions and bridal sessions are awesome. I love them, but uh, we found out doing 100 weddings a year that now I'm doing maybe 70 or 80 of these where I'm spending time driving to our session, driving home, uh, and we're generally taking three to five hours out of our day to do them, right? And that's all good. I do love doing them. But what we wanted to do is create something a little bit new uh, for our clients and give them some more options and also give us the ability to focus on creating more um, refined images in the studio, okay? If you guys have looked at photographers like Sue Bryce or um, you know Mark Siegler or some of these uh, some of these really amazing portrait photographers, a lot of that uh, inspired me in looking at some of their images, right? So. Uh, what I wanted to do is create something for our clients and give them an option to have their bridal portraits done in a studio setting with perfect lighting, um, a more traditional backdrop, but still in an untraditional and unconventional way, right? Now, when we started doing this, my biggest fear was that um, we would be bringing back an old trend and not doing it correctly, because what you may or may not know is that bridal sessions uh, were done in studio uh, years back. It was just pretty standard for a couple to go to the studio, get their portraits done in the studio, and then be uh, be done with it, right? Uh, and those images, if you look at them today, could be construed as kind of cheesy, right? At least the way that some some of them were done in the past. So I didn't want that to happen. Uh, what I wanted to do is mimic some of the Vanity Fair style lighting or the Vogue lighting that you guys see in these magazine spreads and bring that to our brides and grooms and give them that option. Now, this is relatively new for our studio, but in order for us to do this correctly, we had to develop some lighting setups and some uh, different, different uh, I guess, uh, backdrops and different sets for our clients before we actually went out there and started offering it to them. Now, between the time that has passed that I wrote the, the article and I am making this video right now, we have actually done three to five of these bridal sessions for our clients and, uh, and the results have been spectacular. The clients have absolutely loved them. They've come out amazing. I'm really, really happy with the results and so have they, uh, so have they been, okay? Now, a couple things that you guys need to know. When you're shooting in the studio, things are a little bit more controlled, they're more refined, right? But then your margin for error and you know your um, inability to see certain things that are control certain things that happen in the background has to be at a minimum now. Now you're in a studio, right? So everything should be perfect for your clients. We're changing the way we shoot, which means that we have to change some of the equipment that we're using. Now, in our studio, we're using um, Profoto D1s or D2s uh, and the B1 and B2 system as well, but any lighting system will work for this sort of thing. In my article, I wanted to focus on teaching you guys how to do this type of lighting using inexpensive materials. Sure, you guys can buy, um, you know, five foot octaboxes and umbrellas and like all sorts of modifiers. But in reality, I don't think you really need all that to produce this kind of look. In the article, we were using V-flats and uh, three strobes max in order to create the looks that you guys see there. And the results came out very, very well. If you guys like what you saw in the, in, in the magazine article, I can tell you guys now that you're gonna be able to create this with very minimal equipment. Now, a couple things you guys will need, right? V-flats, how do you guys make V-flats? This is the question that we've been, we've been uh, asked uh, ever since we, um, you know, we started showing people how to do this. Uh, and the best answer for me to give you is to look and see if your local camera store has them. You can buy them on Uline, but then you have to buy boxes of 25 of those sheets and you really just need like three or four of them max, right? So go on, um, go to Home Depot. They have uh, like a synthetic um, plywood, not plywood, it's a, uh, it's like a synthetic foam core that you guys can use to create the white side of a V-flat, right? You can paint one side of that black if you want to use it as a cutter as well. So there's an option for you. Use gaffer's tape to connect these things uh, together and give you guys a, um, a large surface area to work with. We use the four by eight feet uh, versions of these. Um, our studio is moving in the next couple months to someplace that's going to be a little bit larger. And we're going to really ramp up this operation, not only for weddings, but we're also going to be doing it for engagement sessions and portraits and other things as well too. Um, once you guys have have your V flats, then you're going to want to look at your lighting setups. Okay, I want you guys to focus on using both sides of your uh, of your V flats in order to control light. Remember, guys, um, with subjects with lighter skin, you're going to define the uh, the shape and the texture using shadows, right? So that means you're going to want to use your um, 
uh, your V flat, the uh, the black side of the V flat, in order to create the shadow and make sure that light's not bouncing all around. With subjects with darker skin, you're going to define their uh, their skin and their texture with the highlights, right? So with the highlights, you're going to be using uh, the white side of the V flat, right? But you want to be using these things together in order to make sure that you guys are creating shape and texture to your clients with very minimal fall off, right? You don't want to have uh, really hard shadows behind your subjects, and you guys don't want to have really mis uh, you don't want to have misplaced light either. So um, go out there practice let me see what you guys do go ahead and, uh, and send me some of your images like you guys do every month I love seeing what you guys are doing with the information we're putting out there in the article um, and I look forward to uh, next month article in Shutter Magazine